I grew up on a farm, and I didn't realize I was going to be a farmer's wife. Uh, we met at a financial institution, actually. I was working in inside the clean worker, working on finances, and he was the handsome landscaper that was mowing outside and working in the flower beds. And we just kind of met from there. You know, as I was working, I always wanted to have my own business. and. And at the same time, when I was really young, I always wanted to be a farmer. Well, our philosophy of farming is just to do it as natural as possible from, you know, having them outside in the sun and on the pasture. So these are the tamworths up here, and actually we could probably go over here. So as you can see, they got a big area to roam. Grew up on a small hog farm. My dad did it just part-time, and I raised pigs for 4-H, so it wasn't anything out of the ordinary for me to be, you know, living on a farm and this is what I wanted to do, but yeah, I wasn't expecting that he was going to be someday a full-time farmer. We have just a couple dozen of the heritage turkeys and then we have about 175 of the broad-breasted whites. So then Brandon moves these pens one face every day. These are the heritage turkeys. They're pretty spunky. We used to have them kind of just out and they'd end up in the neighbor's yard, they'd end up over by the high wires over, you know, a quarter of a mile away, and they, they can get kind of wild on you. For turkeys, it's just the, the bourbon reds here and then the, uh, the uh, broad-breasted white turkeys. These are all pens that have started at the top, the top of the hill by those trees up there. They are moved for the grass for them to eat, and of course they fertilize the ground. Uh, as you look at where they've been, it's an amazing thing that the, how much area they've covered. This pen has probably gone more than a quarter of a mile already. They're in fresh air, they're in real sunlight, they've got this fresh bedding that they can eat and they can fertilize. I mean, they take six months to grow to a size that's half of what their commercial sisters are at. What you get is a more flavorful meat. When we first started farming in the late 1990s, we had to educate people a lot because people didn't know what it meant to have pasture-raised meat. We had to teach them why it's better and how, you know, try to get the product into their hands to show them, you know, how it tastes better. Like with the cattle, we are moving them to a new pasture every single day or every other day. The hogs, they kind of stay in this area for a couple months and they really rip it up and then we'll move them into a new plot. The quality is so much better that we've decided that quantity doesn't matter as much. If we can offer a quality product, our customers are gonna keep coming back and we don't have to grow as much to sell and to make a living. This kind of farming isn't massive. I don't have big machinery and hundreds of acres to farm. You're more focused on raising the animals for each year and then marketing them that, that's your harvest for the year. All right, so we are going now into our pickup joint. It's the name of our store, you know, the place where you pick up chicks. <laughs> we started to do a farmer's market back in 2004. It was the first year we did the West Bend Farmer's Market. At that time, I had my oldest son was seven years old, so he came to help me and he learned to make change, learned how to talk to the customers and each child that got a little bit older, once they were old enough, um, they were allowed to come to the market, and it just, they're amazing with their people's skills. That really, really taught them a lot. But this is, it's been, again, a wonderful life to raise our kids this way, and it really taught them a work ethic. When we first started, we were just doing whole chickens and cut-up chickens, and then we realized, yeah, we didn't need to be more competitive, and so we did then a lot of people like the breasts, and so we did the bone-in breasts and the boneless breasts, and we have some people that love the dark meat, and then that's what they prefer. We have the chicken feet, we have the bones for everybody who, want, who wants to make stock. Yeah, the consumer, I would say, over the last couple of decades, just have, they've gotten more aware of their food, where it comes from, how it's raised, um, they're wanting to eat a little more, much more healthy. Over the course of the years, yes, now that many customers have, our regulars have come to us, they often tell us, you know, yours is the only meat we eat, we don't buy anything from the store anymore, and so it's rewarding to know that they like us that much and appreciate our product that much.
My name is Bill Little. It's Friday morning, so I'm, I'm doing my typical run. I do this every week. We're gonna start off with a food pickup from Festival Foods on East Wash. And it's gonna be a little bit different today because we are picking up a bunch of turkeys with the holiday coming up that we're gonna be giving out to our customers in the pantry, um, along with um, some of the additional items that I pick up every Friday there. Thanks, Bill. Thanks. Thanks, Doc. Have a good Thanksgiving. Okay, you too. Have a good day. Um, I started here at the river last December, but I, I just wanted to change a career. I'm in my early 50s and wanted to do something that I felt was worthwhile, I guess, that I was uh, making even a small difference in the community. How are you today? I'm here. You're here. <laughs> you too. Yeah. I just think there's a lot of people that are right on the fringe. I feel like there's a lot of people who are working two jobs just to make ends meet. And especially if you're a parent, if you have children, just really, really difficult to get by. So the river kind of gives them a helping hand. My name is Joey Dunscombe and uh, I run the mobile lunch program here at the River Food Pantry and, uh, and I also uh, am running the kitchen. Feeding the, over a thousand people a week, um, just like meals actually, and, and that doesn't include what the shoppers get to take home. Coming to the river from a conventional kitchen or restaurant, I play Iron Chef every day. You know, it's like, you, what ingredients do we have? Oh, I don't want that. Looks good, but I don't need it. You know, we might just get a pallet of bulk meat. Okay, what are we gonna do with that? You know, do, do we have some pork shoulder? Is that enough to feed 200 people or 300 people on a Friday night? But that's kind of how every day is. As a father of two boys, there has been times where I've been short on food and short on funds and, you know, struggling to get make sure they have what they need. And I, I, I see people in here that I know. Like I, I know them on a daily basis where they, they have to come here, you know. And I'm talking like friends from the past, you know what I mean? So I do know people that live like that um, all the time. Food to me is something that holds us all together. I heard Bill's here. Let's go see what he's got. How was today, Bill? Uh, it was good. We had a huge order. Looks yeah. like you got a lot of stuff. I think 13 or 14 skids. Wow, that's crazy. I have to go back for a second trip. Yeah, a bunch of great mushrooms, veggies. If I find bigger packages, I'll take the bigger ones, but those little ones will work for now. I just kind of got to make sure I have vegetables for, for dinner. So if you guys see big bags of lettuce, I need big bags of lettuce. Oh, right here. Ooh, this is Perfect. Fresh rosemary, I like that, I'll take that. And then, I think it's time to get back to the kitchen. Thanks a lot, Bill. It's a humbling experience to have to use a food pantry for the first time. People, we often hear that people are um, almost in tears for the first time they come here. And so we try to make it as welcoming and dignified a process as possible. And we constantly hear from people what our staff and our volunteers do an outstanding job of welcoming them and taking away that stigma. It should not be stigmatized or ashamed to have to ask for help. You know, a lot of people ask, you know, what, who, who is the face of hunger? I like to tell people, look in the mirror, because it could be you. Look, look next door at your neighbor, because it's your neighbor. Um, there are people who look just like us. Food pantries used to be called emergency food pantries. Unfortunately, in this day and age, that for many of our families, every day is an emergency. So families can come here once a week, they can shop for food, they can get clothing, they can get hot meals, and we really look at ourselves as a, a stabilizing force for that family. And so it really is strengthening our community, building community together, and um, providing food and, uh, and dignity and hope for, for these folks who many of them are, are just have fallen on some hard times and are working families just trying to get by. 
you have to solve hunger first before you can solve uh, many of the other problems that, that people face. I'm guessing Thanks. you're Charles. Hi, yeah, all right. welcome. Thank welcome you. Welcome to the river. Thank you. Thank you. It's great to have you here. Uh, it's wonderful to be here, and it's wonderful to be here at this time of year. Yeah, well, you know, it's the, the season of giving, the season of thanks, and we're celebrating Thanksgiving here today, and uh, so it's going to be a special evening. Right. We're loading people up with turkeys and all the fixing so that their family can have a traditional Thanksgiving at home. So that's, that's, really that's the aim. So, a so, little tour. Yeah. So then you can see, you know, um, we're all set up for the dinner tonight. You can see our uh, chefs in the kitchen uh, <laughs> fixing the turkey dinner. It'll be traditional turkey dinner with, uh, with potatoes and gravy and vegetables. And we've got pies and, uh, you know, everything that you would imagine for a traditional Thanksgiving feast. We will have that tonight. Well, I'll continue through this way. Please. And um, show you our grocery store. We are a client choice food pantry. People can come in and based on the size of their family, they get to, uh, a certain amount of food. You know, we, we truly believe that food is a right. It's a basic human need. Yes, it it's is. not a privilege. And so, especially considering that 40% of our population are children, oh, God. another 23% are seniors. So clearly, you know, the two most vulnerable ends of the spectrum. And so we want to make sure that we have plenty of food, good, healthy, nutritious food for them to eat. Moving into this section, you can see this is all fresh fruit. We've got that, uh, uh, fresh apples. Um, looks like that's a lot these. of watermelon. That's watermelons, <laughs> uh, lemons. Lemons. Um, this is grapes. This pomegranate. Is product, this is product that we get um, from the emergency food assistance program. It's called TFAP. We have uh, dried fig pieces, raisins, uh, pasta, pasta sauces, um, yeah. green beans. We let them take as much of that as they want. Our walk-in cooler and freezer over here. And then, um, then what you see behind you is all of our warehouse, our, um, our, our back stock. We go through 50 to 60,000 pounds of food product each week wow. that flow through here. So imagine what, what that looks like is basically two 18 wheel, 53 foot semi trailers full of food. Yeah. We go through in a week. That, that, that's astounding and amazing that you have all the volunteer energy and the space and the initiative, but the cut me short of words, tragedy is that there's that many people that come to your doors that, that need it, not want it, but need it. They do. Well, so we are, uh, in terms of food pantries, we are uh, a supersized food pantry. We, yeah. through our combined programs, we touch about a thousand families each week. So it's uh, a lot of people coming together to meet, uh, to meet that need. Right, right. I can't in good conscience just stand around, so let me volunteer. I've come to work. Oh, we would love to put you to work. <laughs> okay, let's yeah. go. Cool. You look busy. Are you Peg? I am. I'm Kyle, and I was told to report to you. Oh, great. You're going to tell me where to put things on shelves. Yes, I am. Right now, you could probably go through these boxes and sort them out, like as far as the baking goods and the breading goods. Pastas and stuff like that go on those shelves. Um, the baking goes over there, so if you can like make space and throw all the bakings over there. Okay, so no square pegs and round holes. Pumpkin with pumpkin, soup with soup, right. baking with baking. Yep, that's right. how that works. Okay. Peg, why do you do this? Why do I do this? Yeah. I, I don't know, I like to pay it forward. I like to help people that don't have things because I've been there and done that. Mm -hmm. So yeah, I like to um, help the people and it's always nice to see people smiling and you it know, it nice makes a difference. And it, you know, kind of humbles yourself to people, you know, yeah. for me anyway, just it's a good feeling. Were you a client of the pantry and now you're giving back? Yes, in my days that I was struggling, I sure did come here and, you know, had something to eat, and um, which is why I was very grateful that they have places like this to, mm -hmm. you know, to feed people that are having hard times. And so now I'm here volunteering and paying it forward, and it feels good. Maraschino cherries. Let's make uh, it, let's baking make, goods. Let's make it old fashioned now. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> right. Just saying. Just saying. Are you going to be okay? I'm going to be okay. All I'm right. feeling. Don't strain a muscle. Yep, exactly. We don't want to get hurt. Take yeah, a look at the fun we're having. I'm having a blast. Yes. Exactly I am. my point. I mean, working with Lance has been 
man, the greatest experience. I can't wait to go home and tell my family about it. You know my name's Kyle, right? Kyle? I keep calling you Lance. Who's you Lance? I don't Isn't know. Is there a Lance? I don't know. I was wondering when he was going to turn up, but... Okay, well then I was wondering when you were going to catch on. But... <laughs> you know what, Sharon? You're teaching me a lot about... Uh... Sharon. Oh, you're funny. You got jokes today. <laughs> Oh, whoa, I'm putting kidney beans in with the baked beans. Look out. Uh-oh. Look out. You're fired. Man, you're just not good at this job at all. Joey Dunscombe. Kyle, how you doing? How you doing, man? Hey, nice to see you. Nice to see you, chef. What are you doing here? Oh, well, I'm mixing up some, uh, some stuffing for tonight's Thanksgiving meal. It's a little one of our biggest meals of the year. You want, to, you want to help? How is pantry chefing for folks that are, are truly hungry? To, what's it like? It's really rewarding. You're cooking a lot more food. Yeah. And it, it's, it, honestly, it, take, it takes longer than I thought it would <laughs> to, uh, to like drum up all this stuff. And like, it, you know, it, it's not just a, a small pan of carrots that we need to peel for tonight's special. It's, right. It, it is a, it's a commitment. It, it might be 60 pounds of carrots. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Yeah, and how many people will you feed for lunch or dinner on average? Um, between 100 and 200. Two Fridays ago we did 250. And this is all considered, we don't want it from the traditional food system. Right. And, and it's, it's good. perfectly good. Oh, God, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Feeding these people is really gratifying. Yeah. And uh, our clients are awesome. Like, they're terrific people from all walks of life. I love that they're yeah. called clients. There's someone you value. They're, they're our people. friends. They're your friends. Yeah. 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 Well, let's cook yeah. this Thanksgiving meal yeah, together, yeah, yeah. my friend. Do you mind if I stay and serve? No, not at all. Okay. Yeah. I'd be I'd be honored to do so. No, that'd be awesome. Yeah. yeah. Great. We got, we got dinner rolls. I mean, Let's it's not dinner with... without dinner rolls. Right, it's right, Thanksgiving right, right. dinner. And then we, we still haven't really opened this up yet. We're about to, but there's turkey. Definitely. Um, yeah. Yeah. Gotta, gotta have that, right? Mashed potatoes. Mashed potatoes. Yeah, there's, there's a little color on there, but you know. <laughs> when you're cooking this amount of food, you're gonna get a little. A it's all right, chef. There'll be no review. Right. Oh, good. Oh, that's our stuffing. Stuffing. Yeah. It yep. smells terrific. And then here's uh, some mixed vegetables. Oh yeah. It's like snap yeah. peas, beans, cauliflower. All kinds of things that are good for you. Broccoli. Yep. There's the gravy. Nice cold salad. Mm -hmm. Toss salad. That's a beautiful salad. Thank you. Cranberry. Cran yeah, you, see, uh, you know what cranberries look like. You got that right. That is some, that's some thick it is, cranberry. It is really coleslaw. Mm -hmm. Some fresh apples. Yep. Pumpkin pie. Finish with pie. Yep. And then uh, refreshments. Refreshments. You got yep. a good Thanksgiving meal. I think so. Yeah. Yep. Broccoli? Do you like broccoli? Some people don't like broccoli. You're good on broccoli? I'm in your camp. Right on. Happy Thanksgiving, my friend. I'm gonna make a little indenture here for the gravy. Now, I know how to roll. Now, I helped make this dressing, so, I mean, you want a little bit of both? Donald, come on, my friend. All right, all right. Now, I know you want turkey. Yeah. Now, I helped make this stuffing. That's what I'm talking about. And have a great Thanksgiving. Yep. It may be the very substance of serving to share nourishment with someone when they are wanting. The River Food Pantry represents that here in the state that grows so much, that has so much bounty. It's a tragedy nationally that some people still suffer from want but on this holiday that celebrates Thanksgiving, they are keeping that tradition alive and well and making sure no one leaves with hunger.